and welcome to my YouTube channel Witty Scholars. Today I will be explaining step by step solution for finding the next permutation lexicographic order when a particular permutation pattern is given. First of all, let us consider the given question. Given the following permutation of letters A to J, what is the next permutation in lexicographic order? Here, using the letters A to J, they have given us a permutation pattern. So for this permutation pattern, we have to find out what would be the next permutation pattern if we consider the lexicographic order. Lexicographic order is nothing but the dictionary order. So let us jump on to step 1. In step 1, we will be considering the last and last minus 1 element and checking the condition last minus 1 element is it greater than the last element. When this condition fails, we will be stopping step 1. Let us consider the pattern that was being given in the question. So here we have the last element as C and the last minus 1 element as E. Now I will be checking the condition that is E is it greater than C. The condition is true. So I will be moving on to the next element that is G. Now I will be checking whether G is greater than E. The condition is true again. So I move on to the next element that is H. Now I check whether H is greater than G. The condition is true again. So I go on to the next element that is I. Now I check whether I is greater than H. The condition is true again. Now I move on to the next element B. Here the condition fails since B is not greater than I. Once the condition fails, I stop step 1 and I move on to the next step that is step 2. In step 2, I will be marking the pivot value that is p of x and its next element that is p of x plus 1. Let us consider the pattern and mark the pivot value. In order to mark the pivot value, we have to consider the element for which the step 1 has failed. So that was b. Since element b, the condition has failed previously, b will be considered as a pivot value. That is p of x and its next element i will be considered as p of x plus 1. Now we move on to the next step that is step 3. In step 3 we are trying to find p of y by considering p of x and its next elements till the last of the list. So we check the condition p of x is less than its next elements. So let's check the condition that p of x is less than its next elements. So p of x is b and its next element is i. So we check the condition b is it less than i. The condition is true. Now we compare p of x that is b with the next element that is h. So the condition b is it less than h is also satisfied. Then we move on to the next element g and we check the condition whether b is less than g. The condition is true again. Next element e we check the condition whether B is less than E. The condition is true again. Then we reach the last element that is C. And we check the same condition again whether B is less than C. The condition is satisfied yet again. Since there are no more elements left, C will be considered as P of Y. Now you might have a question that what would happen if in case this particular condition is not satisfied, then which element would be considered as P of Y? For that, let me take another example and explain. In this, I will be considering the elements B, I, H, G, E and A. And B will be P of X. Following the previous condition, we check P of X is less than the remaining elements. So B, is it less than I? The condition is true. So we move on to the next element and check whether B is less than H. The condition is true. Then we move on to the next element. B, is it less than G? The condition is true again. Then we check whether B is less than E. The condition is true again. Then we check the final element. B, is it less than A? The condition fails here. In this case, we cannot consider A as P of Y. Instead, we will take E as P of Y. That is, the 
element which satisfies a condition before the condition could fail will be considered as p of y this is just an additional information moving on to the next step step 4 previously we have found what is p of x p of y so now we will be marking p of y consider the pattern we have found that c as p of y so i will be marking the same now we know p of y as c moving on to the next step this step we have to swap p of x with p of y let me consider the pattern i will mark all the elements that i have found so far p of x that is b p of x plus 1 that is i and p of y that is c now according to this step i have to swap p of x which is b with p of y that is c while the remaining elements remains constant so our new pattern would look something like this you can see from f to d and from i to e the position has not been changed only for c and b the position has been changed from now on i'll be using only this particular pattern and no longer consider this pattern moving on to the next step in this step we will be considering the p of x plus 1 which i have mentioned previously and the list of elements after p of x plus 1 so in this step what we will be doing is we will be reversing the list from p of x plus 1 till the last element while the elements before p of x plus 1 would remain the same that is it would look something like this so you can see f j a d c the position has not been changed and it is the same but for i h g e b the position has been changed that is it has been reversed so you can see instead of i i have replaced it with b e is been replaced replacing h g is been replacing g itself and h is replacing the e value and i is replacing the b value so you can see this particular part has been reversed and this whole together is the result hope you have liked this video please do like my video and subscribe to my channel Thank you